Oh, I know. Walder Frey gets all the credit. He never would have risked such an action if he didn't have certain assurances. Which he got from me. Do you disapprove? I'm all for cheating. This is war. But to slaughter them at a wedding? Explain to me why it is more noble to kill 10,000 men in battle than a dozen at dinner. Tywin Lannister is rational, cold-bloodedly rational, but rational. And he's a man who has codes and, and loyalties to things larger than himself. I think Tywin's a strict utilitarian, which is the, the greatest good for the greatest number. And, and um, but by his, his version of utilitarianism, it's the Lannister, greatest good for the Lannister numbers, you know. And, and uh, if he can strengthen the Lannister cause, and, uh, and ensure his family's continued survival and, and, uh, and authority by having a group of Starks murdered at a wedding and Stark bannermen murdered at a wedding. From his point of view, why on earth wouldn't I do that? From his perspective, Tywin ended a war that was gonna cost both sides untold suffering and countless lives. Those people who, if Tywin had won the hard way, would have been dead anyway, and, uh, and now, now the war is done and the, the kingdom can unite itself under sort of a dictatorial piece of, uh, of the rulership of Tywin Lannister. A good man does everything in his power to better his family's position. When have you ever done something that wasn't in your interest, but solely for the benefit of the family? The day that you were born. I wanted to carry you into the sea and let the waves wash you away. Instead, I let you live. Because you're a Lannister. Tywin is, is a man of great pride, and I think every single time he sees Tyrion, it's an affront to his pride. Tyrion, who certainly always knew that his father was disgusted by him in some ways, but I don't think he ever realized quite how far it went. It's one thing to to have a distant relationship with your father, it's another to know that your father wanted you dead from your very first day on this earth. And you, the Warden of the North, no more Starks to bow and scrape to. Must have been torture following that stupid boy all over the country. He ignored my advice at every turn. If he'd been a trifle less arrogant. Call himself the Young Wolf. How's that for pomposity? Well, Here's to the young wolf. Oh, forever young. <laughs> Bruce is the kind of man who will be loyal to you as long as it's good for him to be loyal to you. But you know, like so many, you, you read about medieval history and lords, is, you know, the allegiance of lords varied wildly. As soon as Bruce starts to believe that Rob's not gonna win this war, I think he's looking for an escape plan, uh, an alternate route, and also realizing that if Rob were to lose and to die, and the Starks have been essentially wiped out because you know Bran and Rickon are, are missing, presumed dead, and that leaves an opening for a new Warden of the North and a possible advancement, great advancement. So instead of having to follow around this young, in his mind, arrogant lord, he could actually be, be Lord in the North himself. Will you move to Winterfell now that the war's over? At some point, perhaps. What happened up there? I heard the Greyjoy boy seize the place. I heard he killed all the ravens, and after that, nothing. I sent my bastard Ramsay to root him out. Rob Stark offered amnesty for the Ironborn if they gave us Theon. The idea that we had behind the whole Theon the arc through the third season was we really wanted the viewer to be in in it with Theon and to not have any idea what was going on. We, we want people to be confused. We want people to be asking the questions that Theon is asking. Why is this happening to me? Who are you and what do you want? You don't look like a Theon Greyjoy anymore. That's a name for Lord. <laughs> but you're not a Lord. I, you're just, Meat. We wanted to push it to the point where it started to seem like, why, why, why am I watching this terrible things happen to this person? Because that's, that's what it feels like to a person who's in that situation. And then we find out why, um, and we realize that this, this sadist actually 
feeds into the main storyline that we've been watching for the past two years in a very major way. Dervi Jerry City Bilos Daor. Gemelli Meli City Bilos. Lomiri Ziri. Mesmalgon Bestila. Tolvis Jevis. It means mother. You see her get her army in episode four, and here in the finale, you see her get her people, really, because she's got she has her Dothraki followers, who don't number very many, and then she's got the people she's freed from the other cities. But now, at last, she's it's not just, and it's, it's something even more, something almost even more religious about it than being just a queen. I mean, she's the mother of these people. And it creates a whole new dynamic between her and the people that she's fighting for, that she's gonna have to deal with in the future. The way they treat her, the way they, they lift her up, and um, she is um, something that has, it's a, you know, a, a revelation from a prophecy, and, and that, that glorious destiny is coming true. Here it seemed like it was really important to let us know just how many people uh, were counting on her to see the full extent or the mostly uh, the full extent of her army and the tens of thousands of people who flooded out of these gates to pay tribute to her and then keeping the dragons in play because they're always such an important part of, of her identity and we just want to tie all of that together in one great shot.